Welcome to this new course entitled Safe Patient Transfer, Movement, and Immobilization Techniques. At the conclusion of this module, you will be able to describe the basic principles of body mechanics, proper lifting, and transfer techniques, identify standard patient positions and the range of immobilization techniques, explain the importance of quality communication with patients, describe the reduction of patient radiation exposure by using proper immobilization methods, and finally, apply immobilization techniques in routine situations, trauma, and pediatric situations. This module will cover the following areas. Why should we study body mechanics? Effective transfer? Specific transfer techniques? Patient positions and disease conditions? Immobilization principles? And geriatric patient transfer? We will first focus on the study of body mechanics. Biomechanics is a branch of science that studies the movement of the living body, which includes studying how muscles, bones, tendons, and ligaments work together to produce movement. The study of biomechanics will help us understand the best exercise to develop muscles and protect joints. It also teaches us how to avoid injuries and promote fitness, and specifically, how to prevent back injuries during patient transfers. The base of support when standing is the area under your feet. You can increase or decrease your base of support. A narrow base of support is an unstable system. A wide base of support is stable. Increase your base of support by moving your feet apart. Decrease your base of support by moving your feet together. The center of gravity in humans is the hypothetical point at which all the mass appears to be concentrated. The center of gravity depends on position. In humans, when standing in the anatomic position, the center of gravity is approximately at the sacral level 2, or S2. Everyone has a center of gravity. The point differs slightly between men and women and will be higher for children. The body is most stable when the body's center of gravity is located over its base of support. This means that for safe and stable lifting, the center of gravity must always be over the base of support. We will now explore the effective transfer techniques. Stability is the ability to maintain postural balance and support your body with ease. Mobility is the countless movement that are possible in the human body. Although there is a lot of overlap, some muscles are designed for mobility and others are designed for stability. Your mobility muscles are located in the limbs. They have long, white tendons and cross two or more joints. These are joints in the arms and legs. The biceps in the arms and the hamstring muscle of the leg are also examples of mobility muscles. Stability muscles are located mainly in the torso. They are large muscles that supply postural support. The muscles, such as the latissimus dorsi of the back and the rectus abdominis of the anterior abdomen, are also examples of stability muscles. 
For an effective transfer, the technologist should use mobility muscles. Lifting should be done by bending and straightening the knees, not the back. The back should be kept straight or in a position of slightly increased lumbar lordosis. Before lifting the patient, always find out if the patient can move independently. Allow the patient to do as much work as possible. Very often, the patient can be transferred with minimal assistance. However, Sometimes the patient may believe they can stand or move on their own. The technologist should verify the patient's weight-bearing status, recent surgery, the presence or absence of any fractures, any degenerative or bone-weakening disease, unstable joints, or any weakening or debilitated conditions. During the lift, stand with your feet apart to increase your base of support. Keep the patient's center of gravity as close as possible to the transferrer's center of gravity. Lift with your legs, avoid bending your back, and avoid trunk twisting during transfers. Never lift more than you can and always ask for help if necessary. During the transfer, monitor your patient carefully to avoid accidents such as a fall. Now let's explain the specific transfer techniques, including the wheelchair transfer, hydraulic lift, and stretcher transfer. Before starting a wheelchair transfer, Find out if the patient has a strong or weak side. Always position the patient so that they are transferred towards the strong side. This means that the strong side should be closest to the x-ray table. During the transfer, always use the principles of lifting. The standby assist transfer works under the assumption that the patient is weight-bearing. Position the wheelchair at a 45-degree angle to the table, then lock the wheelchair. Communication is key. The technologist must determine exactly how much assistance the patient will need. Use step-by-step -step instructions to communicate clear tasks to the patient. The assisted standing pivot technique is used when the patient needs more help and possible help through lifting. Again, the wheelchair should be positioned at 45 degree angle to the table. Lock the wheelchair and determine how much assistance the patient will need. Lift the patient by placing your arms under the patient's armpit Pivot without twisting your trunk and place the patient's back to the x-ray table. The two-person lift is used with non-weight-bearing patients. As stated, two people are needed to accomplish this maneuver. Always lock the wheelchair before attempting any lift. Remove the arm and foot rest of the chair if that is possible. Explain the exact procedure to the patient. The stronger person will lift the patient's torso. The other person will lift the patient's feet. The hydraulic lift is used to transfer obese patients from a wheelchair to the stretcher or the bed. Technologists may also need to move a patient from a cart or stretcher to the x-ray table. First, position the stretcher as close as possible to the x-ray table and lock the stretcher. 
check if the patient can assist in the transfer. If the patient cannot assist, a moving device, if available, is recommended. Place the moving device on the stretcher. Roll the patient away from the x-ray table and slide the moving device under the patient. Next, roll the patient onto the device and slide the device onto the x-ray table. Transfer is harder, but not impossible, without a moving device. Have the patient cross his or her arms over her chest. The patient is then pulled across and onto the x-ray table by transferring the entire bed sheet or draw sheet with the patient onto the table. We will now explore patient positions and different disease conditions. Let's start with the different patient positions. Supine means the patient is lying on their back. It is also a dorsal recumbent position. Prone means the patient is lying face down. It is also a ventral recumbent position. Erect means the patient is upright. Seated means the patient is sitting on a chair or a stool. Recumbent means the patient is lying down. Trendelenburg means the patient is lying with the head lower than the feet. And Fowler's means that the patient is recumbent with the trunk and head higher than the feet. The trunk can be elevated. 45 to 90 degrees from the horizontal. Semi-fowlers means that the patient is recumbent with the trunk and head higher than the feet. The trunk is elevated 15 to 30 degrees from the horizontal. Sims position means that the patient is semi-prone with the left side and anterior side down. And finally, the lithotomy position means that the patient is recumbent, supine, with knees and hips flexed and thighs abducted and rotated externally. The ankles are then supported. Orthostatic hypotension is a sudden fall in blood pressure that occurs when a person stands up. It is important that technologists understand this phenomenon because patients will be moving from recumbent to standing positions during the course of x-ray examinations. Syncope means fainting. It is often caused by a temporal loss of consciousness due to a drop in blood flow to the brain. Again, the technologist must carefully watch the patient when they are moving from a recumbent to a standing position. Thanks for watching. To purchase the full course and earn your CE credits, click on the link in the description or head on over to our website at www.medical-professionals.com. And while you're there, Check out our All Access Pass, where you can get unlimited CE credits for your state and ARRT renewal for just $49.99. We also offer a host of free resources to make it easier than ever for radiologic technologists like you to achieve excellence. Check out our free radiology CE webinars, clinical reference guides, and free CE courses on our website today. Be more than just certified. Choose medical professionals.